Ecosystem impact on population size and resources. Population size. The size of a population changes depending on biotic and abiotic factors and all interactions affecting that population. The line population depends on biotic factors, the number of prey animals present, number of hyenas, number of other big cats, and amount of grass for prey to eat. Abiotic factors include the sunlight, water, and temperature, and then interactions between predator and prey in competition and parasitism. Populations and ecosystems increase when new organisms are born and when organisms move into the population. Populations decrease when organisms die or when organisms move out of the population. Illegal poaching of elephants for their ivory tusks severely decreased many elephant populations. Some of the abiotic and biotic factors that impact rates of population growth include resources, the availability of food, water, shelter, and habitat, community interactions, predator-prey interactions, competition and symbiosis, and interactions with the land and weather. If the factors on the previous slide do not inhibit population growth, then every year there would be more births than deaths. A graph of population growth could look like this depending on the growth pattern. Population sizes change depending on how much success organisms have as they try to obtain the resources they need. Consider a population of deer in a forest. For most of the year, they eat plants, fruit, seeds, and nuts. During the winter, it is more difficult for them to find food. Resources are limited, and they will eat whatever they can find, including twigs, leaves, and bark. If they are unable to find food, their population size will decrease. Resources impact population size. When resources are readily available, population size will increase. When resources are not available, population size will decrease. Limiting factors are abiotic or biotic factors that limit a population to a particular size in an ecosystem. The population size that can be reached in the presence of limiting factors is the carrying capacity. Water may be a limiting factor for these populations. Examples of limiting factors. When there's not enough usable nitrogen in the soil, plants don't grow well because they can't make proteins or nucleic acids. Usable nitrogen is the limiting factor. When there's a parasite in a fish population in a pond, the fish population cannot increase because so much of the fish's energy goes into fighting the parasite. The parasite is the limiting factor. When big cats and rabbits share the same ecosystem, they can each be the limiting factor for the other because predation is the limiting factor for the rabbits and food is the limiting factor for the big cats. When a population size is maintained near its carrying capacity, the graph of population size over time may look like the one below. The population size is fluctuating around a carrying capacity. Limiting factors. In an East African game park, leopards and hyenas compete for gazelles and zebras, a predator-prey interaction between the carnivores and the herbivores. The herbivores will compete for plants. All five species will compete for water. The limiting factor for the carnivores is food, the number of herbivores they can eat. In interspecific competition, the best competitor will gain access to additional resources and experience a population increase. The weaker competitor will not have access to necessary resources and will experience a population decrease. Lions and hyenas compete for killed game. If lions prevent hyenas from taking their kill, then lions will eat more food and have a stable or increasing population. Hyenas will eat less food and will have a decreasing population. Limiting factors. Suppose that a forest of oak trees is discovered by a population of squirrels. The oak tree forest is tall and wide, offering abundant food and shelter. The squirrel population will increase. Over the next several years, the squirrel population continues to increase due to the availability of shelter and food. Limiting factors. But as the squirrel's demand for food and shelter increases, the forest has remained the same size. The population will level off. 
reaching a carrying capacity because of the limiting factors of food and shelter. Squirrels will have to compete for nesting places and food. Not all will survive. Squirrel population. When a species is introduced into an ecosystem for the first time, its population may grow exponentially until some factor in the environment begins to limit that growth. This diagram shows what happens to the squirrel population. It grew exponentially when they were first introduced to the new ecosystem, and over time, it leveled off. Logistic growth. The population size that can be maintained with a given amount of resources is the carrying capacity. Populations that are limited in resources experience logistic growth. Invasive species. But what if a species is introduced to a new area where there are no limiting factors? It is now an invasive species, as it is not naturally a part of the ecosystem and can cause great damage. The kudzu vine is originally from Asia, where herbivores and weather keep it in check. In North America, there are few limiting factors. Human interaction or the introduction of more herbivores could possibly control this, but it's difficult. Invasive species. If a species takes hold in a new ecosystem and competes for limited resources, then other populations in the ecosystem will decrease in population size and may even go extinct in that area. Other plant life and the herbivores that feed on them might not be able to survive in this new ecosystem. The growth of the kudzu will continue to increase exponentially until another limiting factor is introduced.